an example of the Pythagorean theorem. The Pythagorean theorem states that if you add the squares of each of the legs of a triangle and it's equal to the square of the hypotenuse, then you have a right triangle. Now how that works for us, we'll do a couple examples. Example one, if you know you have a right triangle, this formula will allow you to find any missing side. And specifically the way this will work, you're given any two sides of the triangle. So I'll start off with the first example being the legs. The legs are always the two sides that help form the right angle. And if you recall from previous lessons, the hypotenuse is the side that the right angle basically points to. The right angle will always point. If you think of that as an arrow, it points to the hypotenuse. And so in this example, let's say that this was 8 and 7. To figure out the hypotenuse, we'll call that x, you're going to take each of your legs, you're going to square them and add them together. So I'm looking at this formula up here at the top. It says L1 squared plus L2 squared equal the hypotenuse squared. I have two legs. So I'll take 8 squared plus 7 squared and set that equal to x squared. As I square those values, 8 squared is 64, 7 squared is 49, equal to x squared. If I were to add that together, that'd be 113. Now to get to x by itself, I'd have to root both sides. So I'm going to root this, I'm going to root that, and the square root of x squared will be x. And then if I wanted an exact answer, I'd just leave this as radical 113, or square root 113. If I want a decimal approximation, I can go to my calculator, simply go square root of 113, and it tells me 10.6301, so on and so forth. I'll round it to 10.63. So I say this is approximately equal to 10.63. And as a quick check, when I go back to my triangle, I say this is approximately 10.63. I notice that this is the longest side of the triangle. It has the largest value, so it makes sense. I've got a 7, an 8, and a 10.63. That's our first example for the Pythagorean Theorem.